Are you starting to look around yet and realize that something stinks to high hell in this country? I could be excused for not noticing how shitty the situation has become. Because I happen to live in Houston, where the economy is still managing to keep official unemployment down to 7% or so. But I have begun to notice that even in our hot, humid corner of oil and gas utopia, things are headed downhill. In my neighborhood, the trickle of houses going on sale or even abandoned is becoming an irritant. My neighbor has been out of work for four months and they may have to leave to go wherever a job is. I might be excused for not noticing all this being down here. So what's your excuse? Up there in Michigan and Ohio or California? I know it's at least twice as bad in those places. I can read about the formerly middle class showing up at food lines and sleeping in their cars. I can also read about entire towns becoming ghost towns because the businesses have folded up. It's no secret that some areas of our nation are regressing back to conditions not seen since the Great Depression or that of a third world country. What rationalization has kept you calm and cool as you experience long term unemployment or a job where your real wage hasn't increased a penny in the last 15 years? Do you still think that the American dream is just around the corner? Or is it that you just don't know who to blame? Or that there is anyone to blame? I've certainly noticed that many people who are getting put through the grinder of economic turmoil and job loss don't blame anyone for their misfortune. No, it's simply fate or God's will or bad luck that finds them in their dire circumstance. Sure, I hear some grumbling about the government not doing the right things to create jobs or the tax policy stifling jobs. I hear one or two people here and there. I would think that this near instinctive reaction of the average American to blame themselves or no one at all is because they still harbor the notion that they still control this country as workers and voters. That is to say, they do not believe that events are controlled by an elite closed group or outlanders, that their life opportunities and those of their children are not in their hands but instead are arbitrarily doled out by the ruling class. But that is not true. The thin veneer of sanity that the American clings to is an illusion. It hasn't been real for the last 50 years. Your life opportunities are as much a fate of some elite jackass's whim as they are of your effort. And in many circumstances, they are much more to do with the elite preferences on the kind of people they prefer to allow to ascend than anything you could ever do as a worker. You think about that. When you've put in 20 years at some outfit, and see some preferred class individual with five years promoted beyond you and making three or four times your salary? You could say to yourself, well, that person must have gotten the MBA or degree it took to get up the ladder. Sometimes that's true, but most of the time it isn't. No, most of the time it's just about them being the right kind of person type of person that a corporation wants to show is its face. Yeah, these two represent the true image of the people who designed the F-22. Anyone who believes that has never walked into an engineering firm, let alone put some time in. I've got 15 years in aerospace and oil and gas, and I can tell you the other 99.999% of engineers on the F-22 project don't look like these two. But that poster pretty much tells us what Lockheed Martin thinks of the workforce and who's going to be promoted and who isn't. Who gets the money and who gets the shaft. And you think about that. That is corporate America's vision of its face, its leadership. And it's got zip to do with how much you contribute to the success of the company. The people who really design and build superplanes like the F-22 never get their faces presented as the intellectual power behind the success of the corporation. 
they're not the right kind. So, Mr. American Worker, it's about time you stopped wondering why you're spinning your wheels getting nowhere, pulled your head out of your ass, and took a look around at the real world. The game is rigged against you. So let's say you still think these two women, or this one, got to where they're at because they got the right letters after their names. After all, the VP of Lockheed and program director of the F-22 does teach aerospace engineering at Michigan. That's got to mean she's smart and educated properly. So what about that? What about your chances of receiving admission into the major universities across this nation today? Well, if you're a white male, it ain't that promising. Quote, the box students checked off on the racial question on their application was thus shown to have an extraordinary effect on a student's chances of gaining admission to the highly competitive private schools in the NSCE database. To have the same chances of gaining an admission as a black student with an SAT score of 1100 an Hispanic student otherwise equally matched in background characteristics would have to have a 1230, a white student a 1410, and an Asian student a 1550, end quote, Neely. Maybe you want to attend one of the elite Ivy League schools to become part of the ruling leadership of this nose-diving country. Maybe you think if you could just get into that door and bring your ideas to the game, you could change things around. But if you're a lower middle class white who can't afford 50000 a year, well, it only gets worse for you, son. Quote, Distressing as many might consider this to be, since the same institutions that give no special consideration to poor white applicants boast about their commitment to diversity and give enormous admission breaks to blacks, even those from relatively affluent homes. Espen, Shade, and Radford in their study found the actual situation to be much more troubling. At the private institutions in their study, whites from lower class backgrounds incurred a huge admissions disadvantage, not only in comparison to lower class minority students, but compared to whites from the middle class and upper middle class backgrounds as well. The lower class whites proved to be all around losers when equally matched for background factors including SAT scores and high school GPAs. The better off whites were more than three times as likely to be accepted as the poorest whites. 0.28 versus 0 0.08 admissions probability. Having money in the family greatly improved a white applicant's admissions chances. Lack of money greatly reduced it. The opposite class trend was seen among non-whites where the poorer the applicant, the greater the probability of acceptance when all other factors are taken into account. Class-based affirmative action does exist within the three non-white ethno-racial groupings, but among the whites, the groups advanced are those with money. A result of the fact that, except for the very wealthiest institutions like Harvard and Princeton, private colleges and universities are reluctant to admit students who cannot afford their high tuitions. And since they have a limited amount of money to give out for scholarship aid, they reserve this money to lure those who can be counted in their enrollment statistics as diversity enhancing racial minorities. Poor whites are apparently given little weight as enhancers of campus diversity, while poor non-whites count twice in the diversity tally. Once as racial minorities, and a second time as socioeconomically deprived. End quote, Neely. And of course, this does nothing to talk about the gender preferences in university admissions. So there you have it. Even if you believe the corporate propaganda that the best and brightest and most productive get to the top, you have no more reason to wonder why you didn't, or why you won't get the admission to the university to better your own life chances. This data was collected once back in 96 by Harvard, and it has never been collected again. This graph is probably not available on any Harvard University web page. Wonder why? Now take a look at your kids. They're going to get the same treatment. They're going to be boxed into the same life opportunities that you've gotten, probably even worse. 
No way you claim. Bullshit. My kids are going to be successful in leaders. Not likely. Not in this nation. Not the way things are. They're going to be in the same spot as you. Toiling away to keep something of the materialistic American dream. And by then you'll be some old useless fart who's forgotten all the great things your children are going to be and do. Now in many states, including Texas, the paying students have seen their tuition for college skyrocket from around a thousand dollars a semester when I was at the University of Texas in the early 90s to about eight to nine thousand dollars a semester these days. Well, it may surprise you to learn that in many states a good chunk of that tuition money coming from the families of middle class students, 20 percent in Texas, is taken right off the top and put into a fund to subsidize scholarships for poor students. The same poor students of privileged minority class that bump out better qualified whites and Asians. So out of your 40 to 50 grand that you spend or borrow to send your kid to a public university, eight to 10,000 of that goes to pay for students who get in on racial preferences with far lower grades and test scores. And not only that, illegals are a large pool of that privileged minority class being accepted and subsidized all across the nation at public universities. Is any of that blood boiling yet? A white American citizen who moves in from another state has to pay full out-of-state tuition rates if their kids manages to make it in through the racial quotas. But an illegal from Mexico or Africa gets preferred acceptance with brain-dead grades and test scores and then gets 20% of your kids' tuition and four others to pay their way through school. Just so they can be hired preferentially over your kid by the same elite scum with the same racial ideas in the corporate world. So you think long and hard about that. What kind of a government would screw over its own citizen workers like that and allow corporations to do it again? Do you need a hint? An elite ruling class that doesn't give a damn about your rights or your welfare. This government at all levels, federal, state, and local, does not care about you. They have their own ideas about who's valuable and who's not. And there's little you can do within your own personal dealings to change the life outcomes of yourself or of your children under these constraints. And yet, I still have to hear the nonsense of the Tea Partiers and Patriots and Conservatives day in and day out. Most of them don't know 10% of what's being done to them. Even if they did, they're too gutless to do anything about it. So maybe you're okay with all that. You don't have any outrageous ambitions anymore, and you're fine with your kids at least getting some shot